Hi, and welcome back to the second deck deck we have for you today. It'll be the deck I am playing. It is Black Red Vampires with a heavy madness theme. Uh, if you've been following the spoilers, there have been plenty of cards uh, <laughs> spoiled for this deck. And yep. uh, as you can see here, there's about 25 or 30-ish uh, here, and I wasn't actually able to fit all of them. There's uh, a, uh, under at least another vampire. That's Olivia's Bloodsworn. Colorless black 2-1 flyer. Can't block. Red give a vampire haste, which would have been nice in an aggressive deck like this, but I really wanted to focus on the Madness theme, and that uh, that card doesn't really play at all with Madness, doesn't really interact with it. But if you wanted to end up cutting down on the Madness theme and play more of a traditional aggressive deck, that is another option you could look for. Uh, but for now, we've got our sort of Madness enablers, which are this column here. We have Air Falcon Wrath. It's a 2-1 discard a card, becomes a 3-2 flyer. Delver Vampire. Yeah, two mana, three two flyer, great rate, and it gives you uh, maybe a, a cheap card on the next turn. We got Ravenous Bloodseeker, which is a nice uh, callback to Aquamiba. If you were playing back then, you realize that Aquamiba was sort of an unsung hero of the Blue Green Banis deck, and uh, I assume this card will uh, play fairly well. I mean, two mana, three power, again, good aggressive body, get some under cost of cards. Uh, no notably, if you had something in your deck that could pump the Bloodseeker, then it could be uh, much more powerful than Aquamiba. Yeah. And we do have Drana. Yeah. So and have... and Olivia, I guess. Mm -hmm. yeah. I guess that wouldn't actually work. It would have to have to get another pump. But yeah. So if you every little bit helps. Yep. Olivia is the card that is the most exciting card, I think, in the deck. Or Agreed. At least may maybe second to Falconrath Gorger, but we'll get to Gorger in a second. I think it's Olivia by far. That, that, yeah. I think this card is incredibly powerful. Yeah, this is definitely the more powerful of the two. Uh, it's a three mana, three three flyer, colorless black red, and whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you can discard a card and give that creature haste and a plus one plus one counter and make it a vampire in addition to its other types. And you can end up discarding some of your Bandus creatures, cast them off Bandus, then it triggers again, and create these incredible chains yep. where you play an Olivia on three, you already have maybe another creature on uh, on the battlefield, you untap and play two, maybe three more creatures on turn four, and they all have haste. You make this huge attack for about a million damage. Yeah, I think uh, Olivia... It, it rounds up. When your opponent plays an Olivia on turn three, you have to answer her. Yeah, definitely. And it, even if you don't have a really broken draw with her... Three mana, three three flyer is still just a good body. Exactly. I mean, we spent the last two years trying to deal with Mantis Riders, so uh, I th this card I think is great. And if this deck really becomes a staple of the meta game, you can rest assured that Olivia will be a big part of it. Yep. And then the trickiest Madness enabler we have, <laughs> Elusive Tormentor. This guy's a two black black four four. And you can pay one discard a card and transform it, and it transforms into Insidious Mist. Probably the coolest card from a pure flavor perspective, in my opinion, of the set. Yeah, he's got like a he just turns into fog. Yeah, it's just it it's just straight up out of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Just yeah. turns into a fog and then gets you yeah. while you're sleeping. Sneaks in and then flips back and then you just don't know what to do. You're dead. Yeah. Game over. You're you're a slave. <laughs> or at sixteen life, whatever. Yeah. You you've lost twenty percent of your health. Yeah, he'll come back for the other eight okay, percent later. Yeah, sure, uh, flips into a zero one uh, hexproof indestructible. Can't block. Can't be blocked. Some nonsense, but basically yeah. you're getting hit for four. Yeah, so it flips into the this like seemingly innocuous creature that when you attack and then they don't block, you can pay three mana, flip it back. So it's sort of like a, a four four hexproof indestructible unblockable creature. That yeah, you, you have to, you definitely have to jump through some hoops, but. At, at its surface rate, it's just a 4-mana 4-4, four four, and then your opponent has to do something to deal with it. And yeah. once they try to deal with it, then you kind of have this extremely resilient creature, and it's just like another thing that insulates you from wrath effects and things of that nature. Yep. And once you get uh, a two enough mana, this card is almost unkillable. They probably need something like Grasp of Darkness. It's dead waiting it like be okay, too. So against black decks, it probably be, uh, won't perform as well, but there are going to be certain decks that just can't handle this card going mm -hmm. along. Uh, but in an aggressive deck like this, uh, as a four mana creature that is mana intensive, I've uh, opted to only have two copies. Could w end up wanting more because this card is it's going to be sort of tough to evaluate. It does a lot of stuff. Yep. It can do some stuff on defense too. It can block a little bit and then flip over and sort of become this infinite blocker and then get in for four uh, to turn the tides in a race. Uh, or it can just 
generally be this sticky madness enabler that's going to be hard to deal with and deals them four damage every turn. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, a really cool card. Yep. Then in this first column, we have the Mandus cards. So these are the cards that we're going to be able to discard for value and get sometimes at a very low rate, along with uh, Fiery Temper, the card that we've uh, seen for a while and that you played last week that we know is great. Uh, Falconrath Gorger, while Olivia is, I would still say, the, the most exciting card, this is the card that I personally am most excited by. Because not one because it goes so well with Olivia, mm -hmm. you can just start discarding any of your creatures and getting them all into play. Only costing one mana means that like this card can get into play really early and set up these really impressive engines where you're really humming. And it's just a good one mana two one good aggressive body. And it's in a mana stack where you're trying to balance between having the right number of enablers and the right number of madness cards, but you're also trying to curve out effectively because you're an aggressive deck, you can run into a lot of problems because there are so many moving parts. And this card just makes sure that you have enough things to discard so that you can focus on having the discard outlets. And that's why I've sort of weighted the deck more towards having discard outlets as opposed to having more madness cards. And because this card just floods you with anything that you can... I just feel like the card should have a drawback. Like... Why doesn't it? It's just really good. They've been giving us one mana two ones with upside for like four years, and no one plays them. So yeah, maybe, maybe that's maybe true. Maybe they're, they're pushing it to get us to play with one mana creatures again. Yeah, it's been a while since you could play Savannah Lines in Standard. True, I've been I, really sad. I do want to note that I think that despite Olivia being the most powerful and the most flashy card, I don't think this deck would really be able to exist without Falconrath Courtier. Yeah. There aren't, uh, there really aren't a ton of good one ups for the deck, which is why I've turned towards having a couple copies of Zergo as the only non-vampire in the deck, just because I wanted to be able to uh, curve out effectively. He can turn into a vampire. Oof, yeah, we'll we'll, he we'll work on that. Join the? Are they a family? Or... Mm. Yeah, family sounds about right. Are they like a, a hive? I I know nothing about magic lore, so yeah, okay. your guess is as good as mine. All right, go on. So uh, Asylum Visitor is a card that Major has touched on in his deck deck because he's playing a couple copies, and I think it is, again, great in this deck. Two mana, three, one body, perfect. Uh, another madness card you can discard. And the this deck, because you're discarding a lot to put your creatures into play and you're an aggressive deck, you're going to run out of cards quickly, and this is a card that can easily uh, be incredibly good going along or, or into the mid-game, find you maybe the extra fire temper to finish them off, or... Uh, maybe a madness enabler if they've killed yours and that i think this card is just really powerful and so i'm excited to play with it and then incorrigible youths this is a card that is going to contribute to some of your most aggressive starts this card's just, really good yeah just going turn two blood seeker or air into turn three incorrigible youths you're attacking for seven damage on turn three you have a bunch of power in play uh, and three mana four three haste is just such an absurd rate and yep. it's so easy to get that rate with all your good madness enablers that this card is definitely just going to be a staple of almost any madness deck even if you're blue red and not really vampire themed this card is just such a good rate that you're going to play it and then the last creature in the deck is a creature that doesn't fit with madness but i think fits with our theme of trying to flood the board with creatures and that is drawn liberator of malakir the often forgotten drawn yes has not seen a lot of play, even though it was uh, heavily hyped during Battle for Zendikar spoiler season. And I think it should be quite good in this deck, although I'm a little worried about the black-black casting costs for turn three. I think the mana in this deck is definitely shaky, and after testing it a bit, uh, I'll probably end up shifting it more towards one of the two colors so that I can uh, create a more stable mana base in that way, and that might have to sacrifice some power level to do so. I think the good thing to that note is that you actually probably want to be playing Drana on turn four, so you'll be more reliable. If you can hit Drana off of Olivia and give her haste, then she's just ridiculously powerful. Yeah, and that is... And not only do you give Drana haste, you make it a 3-4 upon entering the battlefield, which is really Basically important. impossible to kill. <laughs> yeah, the, so the, if they're trying to hold up their fiery impulse or their fiery temper, thinking they can kill your Drana and they just can't... I mean, I assume they'll probably just have killed your Olivia. They probably should have just killed your Olivia, yes. That's probably you're a mistake. Right. Yeah, but uh, if they did mess up, yes. <laughs> then they're going to pay for it. But, but even making it a 3-4 when it enters the battlefield, then 4-5 when it connects, now it survives Grasp of Darkness. We've got into that key 4-5 range. Uh, yeah, D Olivia sort of, it just it makes all your creatures so good. Olivia's great. Agreed. Uh, the rest of the deck, we have a, a sort of minimal removal suite. I like to have my aggressive decks be very threat-heavy. Uh, Fire Temper, I touched on, just super efficient. Lightning Bolt, 
staple card, but probably the most famous card in Magic, other than maybe like Black Lotus or something. That, that might be true. Crit critically actually goes upstairs. Um, we've been playing with Fiery Impulse for a long time now, and that card doesn't hit players. Fiery Temper does. Yep, and, and that's super important in this deck. Uh, I have one copy of Roast to help kill big creatures, but I wanted to be able to hopefully kill something bigger, namely Mindcrank Demon. And normally I would want to play... Um, the, Ruinous Path. Uh, yeah, there we go. Ruinous Path in this slot. But once again, I was worried about having too many double black cards, and so I'm going to try out To the Slaughter, even though this deck doesn't really enable Delirium that well. Uh, I'm hoping just to nab some big creatures with it, maybe nab a Jace, uh, if, uh, because Michael plays Jace in basically every deck he's ever played. True. I certainly think it's possible if you like discard a land, one of your Madness Enablers, and it's turn four or five, you you might be able to hit Delirium. Yeah, there, there's there's a little bit of upside there, but uh, I'm I'm a little worried that this card is going to end up being uh, underperforming, especially against cards like Gideon and Nissa, Voice of Zendikar. So it's possible that this should just be Runa's Path. But for now, I this is the one of the concessions I made to the mana. Sure. Uh, the mana base, as we noted in your deck deck, is just dual lands and basics. Yep. Uh, not very exciting. I think Foreboding Ruins is a super important card to this deck. Much like Falconrath Gorger, I just don't think the deck would actually function without it. Be Having a dual land that can come into play untapped on the first two turns of the game pretty easily and add either color is going to do wonders when you're trying to curve red card into black card into like multiple red cards or red card into red card into double black card. Uh, and so it'll help smooth out a lot of your draws, and I'm hoping I draw a lot of foreboding runes in the next five games. Yeah, I, I think <laughs> that uh, on the surface it might appear like Ross's mana should be really good, but the best draws out of this deck is going to involve double or maybe even triple spelling, and so that requires some very specific mana costs. Yeah, that's something that I think a lot of people overlook when they're building mana bases, is how often I want to double spell and with with what cards am I most often double spelling, and you can sort of combine those mana costs and say, how can I reach this by that turn, mm -hmm. and it's, it's something that's easy to overlook when you're just looking at every card individually, but it's definitely going to tax this deck's mana base a lot, and uh, hopefully it turns out to be a little bit better than I suspect. <laughs> so uh, that is about it for the main deck. Come back and join us for the sideboard. Back here with the sideboard of my Red Black Vampires deck. A lot of uh, pretty normal looking cards. Again, early in the standard format, you want to build your sideboards with pretty generic answers. And rather than looking at very specific decks that you're trying to tackle, because we don't know exactly what those decks are going to be, you're trying to look at more general archetype kind of things. So uh, up top, we've got some different removal spells, depending upon the kinds of threats our opponents are presenting. There is a card that I think could end up making its way into the main deck, especially if you wanted another Madness Enabler, is Sinister Concoction. This is a single black enchantment, pay a black and a life, put the top card of your library into your graveyard, discard a card, sacrifice the enchantment. It's such a weird card. Destroy target creature. <laughs> it has four, line, four things. Yeah. They, I think you have to solve the, rid, the riddle of the Sphinx in the middle, then maybe you fight yeah. a spider. Is anyone going to resolve this card correctly ever? Mm -hmm. Eh, probably not. Okay. <laughs> they'll they'll learn quickly. It it does. It's a lot of like little delirium enablers. Mm. Probably should have this in your deck. It does everything. Maybe. But the uh, just being when when you're playing an aggressive deck and you don't have that many spots for removal and you want some of your removal to go upstairs and that usually means burn so that you're limited in the size of creatures you can kill with it. You need your other removal spells to basically kill anything and be efficient. Yes, and this card. Uh, can, can just be a two mana sorcery that kills something. B uh, black, black might be tough, but if we end up moving the mana base more towards heavy black, that'd be great. But this is also just a card that you can land with an extra mana somewhere in the first three mm -hmm. or four turns of the game and then just have it sitting there. And your opponent is almost incentivized to just not put a creature on the board. They just like, There's no way they're going to spend their entire turn four or five playing a Kalidus or playing an, some giant thing and you just sinister concoction it for one mana and continue to develop your board with the, the rest of your turn. I mean, it just... It sort of it just binds your opponent's hands yep. and, and locks them out from really being able to do anything. And then just being a, a madness enabler is nice. So I think this is a card that I definitely wanted to play with. Once again, I was worried about having too heavy of a black commitment, at least in uh, in the main deck. 
Deadweight is going to be a great removal spell against aggressive decks. I agree with Michael. I think it's going to be a staple of the format. And so we have some on the sideboard here to bring in against opposing aggressive decks. Just the most efficient for its cost. One mana kills most things that people are going to play on the first two turns of the game, maybe even on the third turn. It can kill something like a Matter Reshaper. It can kill uh, the the new devil that... Uh, Three, two minutes devil. Yeah, yeah. can kill Sin that card. Prodder? Sin Prodder. There we go. Uh, so the, this card is just great. Not much to say there. Uh, where Michael had the new coercion slash cranial extraction, I have duress just because I want the most mana efficient discard spell possible. But this is going to be obviously very good against ramp decks, very good against uh, control decks, and it should be good against Michael's deck as well. Yep. And it will continue to be a staple of standard, and like it has been for probably three years now. Fifteen years. Of standard. It wasn't in standard for that long. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Roast is just another removal spell for larger creatures, and I think there are going to be a lot of people that are curving into stuff like Dark Dwellers, and Roast will be great against those mid-range decks, because they'll kill just most of their things, guaranteed for a very efficient cost. And then a card that might seem strange, I wanted to get in here because it's a card I wanted to talk about, Virulent Plague, because I think it's going to be very good in this format. I agree. We've um, got Nissa and Gideon. Yep, Nissa, Gideon, Hangerback Walkers, Secure the, secure waste. the Wastes. Uh, even Kalidus, even though it's in your sideboard, is it's going to be a thing in uh, lots of people's main decks, and specifically more controlling decks. Yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. I think Virulent Plague is going to be pretty powerful. Yeah, we saw this card pop up a bit in uh, a previous standard format, in the, the previous format, as a one of, sometimes coupled with Dark Petition, so you can find it. it. was yeah. all about it. I, I know. I'm, I'm aware. But I think that this so this is a card that I just didn't want people to be sleeping on in the early days of this format because it's definitely a card that you can just sort of forget and leave in the back of your head and never really put in your deck and then you just lose to secure the waste and yeah and you could have you blew it you could yeah. you could have found an answer you could have been a contender yep then in the bottom row we have sort of our go big kind of cards if we're playing against a heavier removal strategy we can bring in some planeswalkers got uh, Nixilis, draw some cards kill some stuff chandra this card is busted it's just way too good really it does so much stuff you just draw you, sure? you just draw a million cards think chandra's good you madness all the cards you discard maybe <laughs> I, I just really want to do that, that actually sounds awesome yeah i know it it's never going to happen but, Never. Yeah, your that's what you're, you're going to plus it twice, and your opponent's going to die. Yep, that's what's actually going to happen. But a man can dream. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you just need to give yourself hope, and that's what Chandra gives you hope for that massive overkill that everyone loves, while simultaneously eliminating your opponent's hope of ever beating her. <laughs> yes, that card is great. And then Kalidus is here mainly as a card that we can play against opposing aggressive decks and combine with dead weight and have this really powerful. Uh, go slightly bigger because that's how you want to position yourself in aggressive mirrors. Uh, Kalidus is perfect for that. It's even a vampire. Just synergize with the rest of our Flavor, vampire stuff. Synergy, lifelink. Yeah. It's a it all. I mean, it's a vampire. It just had to go in the deck. We can yeah. sacrifice our other vampires, make it gigantic, gain a million life. You can. You know, th this card is also just really good. Just yeah, pe people have just been zacking, sacking zombies to Kalidus, but... Yeah. He kills his own, too. Yeah. <laughs> he kills his own. <laughs> he, he is a traitor. <laughs> Yep. See, so yeah, I'm putting it all together. Yeah. This card, flavor A plus. Yep. Whoever designed this card, good work. That's my deck. <laughs> Come right. back for some games. All right, let's play. 